What's up? We're live. Can you believe it? Let me fix this. Oh, I didn't do it. Oh, I guess that's correct. All right. Give it a second. Let all my fans come in. Just kidding. We are back in Randroid's dojo, but it is different. Gotta hang that sign better, but it's gonna have to do for now. I'm calling this Randroid's coding hour. We're gonna spend an hour working on something new. So I've got a new project that I want to work on, a personal project involving AI, but maybe not uh, not what you, you're used to seeing on this channel. Recently, this is more about an old school problem, taking voice, speech, audio, and converting it to text. This is for a side project of mine. I do want to use AI in part of this. Specifically, I don't know how good voice to text is these days. And I want to see how easily, you know, out of the box voice to text software can actually comprehend what is being said correctly. And where it can't, I want to see if generative AI can kind of uh, clean up around the edges, smooth out some of the rough edges. So the the point of this is I'm going to do some interviews, some one-on-one -on -one conversations, and I want the text so that I can then use Gen AI to tell a story with that interview and get creative and have ChatGPT like software rearrange the text of the interview or potentially stylize it in a way that it tells a really good short story or multiple short stories. So that's what we're trying to build. I'll explain more about the project as I go on, but today we're just doing some initial research around voice to text, what's out there nowadays. So we know it's gotten good, but what is right for this project? So what are some of the things that we're looking for? I mean, obviously if we can do this like offline for free, That'd be great because I'm going to have these audio files, raw audio files on my computer. And I don't need them to be transcribed live. I don't need to be able to scrub through them. Like imagine you're streaming, streaming something on Netflix or whatever, and you want to get captions or like YouTube has live captions where it, it listens to the audio and then transcribes it. It's not pre-generated or whatever. The way it does that is it looks ahead a bit and then generates for what's the audio that's coming. I don't really need any of that. It just needs to be offline. I say free because, you know, there's tons of services out there, especially something like this that's been around a while and they're going to charge different varying fees and whatnot. Um, it doesn't have to be online. I don't need to be able to log in and do this. I could just run a command or something. What else? So I kind of need it to maybe not just first off, let's go with accuracy it needs to be accurate. Hold on one second. Okay needs to be accurate or need a way to, how did I phrase it earlier, clean it up. So maybe a pipeline where we take the rough audio, put it in, get some rough text and then and smooth out that text. Imagine, imagine it actually identifies some, okay, so let's take a step back. Imagine you have hundreds of hours of this audio, right? How do you know that what you output in the text is accurate? Are you going to read every sentence? Maybe not. So we need a way to know that it's accurate. Obviously during testing, we can, you know, do an hour long recording and then read the text and make sure it's, you know, close to 100% accurate. But like, if you do this for hundreds of hours, you're not gonna wanna do that every time. So one of the things I want to do is be able to flag things that are not necessarily obvious or like things that the AI got confused about, or in this case, the software, or whatever, the model that is gonna be used here, not necessarily AI to generate this text. So maybe self-correcting or self-alert, like some kind of alerting that says this sentence was vague or we we interpreted either this way or that way. That's kind of a bonus feature. If it's just 99% accurate out of the box, then I don't even need that. So we can we can come back to that. But yeah, some, some way of cleaning it up or flagging ambiguities, we'll call it. All right, and then what else? I mean, we could just start there and then we can add to this list as we go. I open up a new web page here. Let's just do some research voice to text. So I want modern. You can see I've already looked at a couple solutions. So there's a ton. When I was Googling around, there's a ton of stuff. Looks like, okay, Watson has something. I'm just going to go through them pretty rapidly because I already have one that I think I'm going to use, but I just want to kind of like look around and make sure I'm not missing anything. If you have any ideas or suggestions, let me know. I know one of the things people recommend is dragon voice to text. So we'll go look at that one. That's a classic one, right? And what else? All right, so Watson's here. Let's start with Watson. IBM Watson, speech to text technology enables fast and accurate speech transcription in multiple language. We don't need multiple language. English is fine. 
variety of use cases, including but not limited to customer self-service. We don't really need that. Agent assistance, speech analytics. Yeah, we don't need all that. Get started fast with our advanced machine learning models. Out of the box, customize them for use case. Okay. So what is the get more accurate AI, our best in-class AI embedded with Watson speech detects truly understands your customers. Sure. Explore the demo, maybe. All right. Recognize speakers. See, that's something that I thought about. Let's add that to the wish list because I'm, and it's going to be more of an interview style. So I'll ask a question and the person will respond. So I can always edit out, you know, my questions by hand. But yeah, it would be nice to know, like, who's speaking. We can come back to that, though. All right. Play audio. Welcome to Zapata Online. How may I help you? I ordered a trip for a robot vacuum cleaner last week, which got delivered yesterday. The vacuum cleaner appears to be damaged. I was wondering if I can get a refund. If the product is damaged, you can return the product to get a full refund. Do you want me to process the return? That would be awesome. I had a microwalk water dispenser in the same order. I would like to keep that. Okay. Nothing changes with the water dispenser. Do you have the original box of the package with you? Yes, I still have the trip board box with me. Wow. In that case, I can generate it's a giving return. giving you a percentage of accuracy. Thank you for contacting Zapata online. Sounds great. I can do that. Thank you. Oh, and you can see the JSON that's flowing through. I mean, that's freaking awesome. Like, what's the lowest accuracy? 94%. Oh, I think I saw like a 60. Oh, I see. These are alternatives. So I think he said the word the, but it's 41% chance he actually said pot. Interesting. And so it looks like they have additional training. Watson Speech Detects allows you to apply domain-specific language training and acoustic training to improve the accuracy of speech recognition. That's pretty cool. So maybe if I use the same setup, same microphone and all that, I can train it on my own audio and correct any issues. And then the next time it runs it through, maybe it'll be more accurate. That would be cool. Definitely more than we need. So I'm not putting that on the list. But let's see the base model. Did it, where did it differentiate? Or where did it, where, where did it differ? Okay. So Zapata, right? So the bottom Zapata, right? It doesn't know what Zapata is because it's a brand name. Oh, here's another issue. Order trip for robot vacuum cleaner. Ordered a trip robot vacuum cleaner. Okay. Yeah. So if you have any domain specific language, it's going to get tripped up. So we might actually want something like this. It's very interesting. I don't think I'm going to have any domain specific language necessarily. And my first few interviews, they're not going to be technical or anything like that. But that's something I'll keep an eye out for. Certain, probably personal names and stuff is going to be a problem, but can always work through that. That would be awesome. I had microwalk water dispenser. Oh, that one seems wrong. What did he say there? That would be awesome. Hi, Michael Walk Water. <laughs> what did he actually say? Welcome to Zapata Online. How may I help you? I ordered a trip for a robot vacuum cleaner last week, which got delivered yesterday. The vacuum cleaner appears to be damaged. I was wondering if I can get a refund. If the product is damaged, you can return the product to get a full refund. Do you want me to process the return? That would be awesome. I had a microwalk water dispenser in the same order. I would like to keep that. I had a microwalk water dispenser in the same order. Okay, that's really what it's called. Okay. So yeah, it, it corrected itself. And it's got this thing about word timings. So it gives you the timestamp of every freaking word. So something like that could be really cool. But so I'm going to show this is like, this is the power of speech to text nowadays. You can get pretty crazy with it. But I'm going to rule this out because I'm pretty sure it's going to cost a lot. I mean, let's just look at it. What's the pricing and the API we'd have to use? But I'm curious how crazy this is. Get started, more accurate AI, protect. I wonder if we can ask Google's how much is Watson speech to text. Where's my uh, labs? Why is labs not turned on? This is all turned on. Oh, it's down here now. They put the ads first. <laughs> That's new. All right. So have you Watson's speech to text? Multiple pricing tiers. Light zero to five hundred minutes. Per, wait, <laughs> zero dollars for five hundred minutes per month. Wait, five hundred minutes per month. Hmm. Plus, two, oh, plus two percent per minute per month. Okay, so it's two two cents per minute. So what does that come out to? Oh, that's the plus service. Never mind. I guess it depends how good the light service is, but it might actually be free. Because let's see, will I have five hundred minutes a month? Hmm, that might be within my what I'm my range. I don't actually know. Uh, let's put that as an open question. How many minutes a month of recordings? All right, but yeah, two cents per minute might not be bad. What is, okay, let's see. What is 100 hours in minutes? 6,000 minutes. What is 6,000 cents in dollars? And then we gotta double that because it's two cents. You need AI for that, dude? Just use a calculator, please. 600 cents to dollars. To convert cents to dollars, you can. Do the, for example, $4. I don't want you to give me an example, Bard. See, I don't like... Well, actually, it told me. Okay, never mind. I take it back, take it back, take it back. 60 so $120 
if I did a sim medium medium tier yeah 120 400 hours okay good to know and then it's also about ease of use so looks like we're gonna have to use their API I wonder if they have some kind of web app I could use service can describe speech from various reports two types of models previous generation models that include terms broadband and narrow band and names yeah so it's very corporate-y effective July all previous generation models will be removed to the base URL IBM cloud yeah so we'd have to figure out like a getting started or something so IBM Watson speech to text getting started how to build a chat bot no thank you AI for customer service, explain and govern AI, access risk and enhance AI to maintain regulatory compliance. That's cool. Something to look into. Automate with AI ops. Let's create automated systems that make work less work. That's actually something interesting, but a little off topic. Create an account, set up IBM Watson services, install the required libraries, create an instance of speech service. You can do this with the web client API or the command line interface, capture and convert speech to text. You can try Watson service for free, no time restrictions. Mm. It looks like this guy did. transcription, so we'll be able to do our live speech to text in real time. So as we speak, we'll see our transcription appear on the screen. I run into some issues when you're installing Pi Audio. So if you get a win for a Windows machine, so I believe it helps dump so some, this so out and Python. Of your own model. So if I actually go back to, which is the US broadband model, so it's this one down here. If you do want to change it, however, just go copy the model that you want from here. Then jump into your transcribe file and then a description example using Watson speech text. There it goes. Text. Let's we're see. Actually I want to see it start it. So what we're now going to do is actually run this code. So I'm going to be able to speak into my microphone and you'll see the live transcription appear on the screen. Nice. So what we can do in order to run this is we actually need to run this transcribe file. So to do this, we can just type in Python and then we want to run transcribe pi dash t and then we want to pass through how long we actually want to record for so in this case we can type dash t 20 so this means that it's actually going to transcribe for 20 seconds now again you can change this to whatever it is that you want if you want to transcribe for longer you can do that if you want to transcribe for shorter you can do that as well just pick the timing that you want to transcribe for so the full command is python space transcribe dot pi space dash t space 20. Hit so it. this means it's going to transcribe for 20 minutes. So if we run this, I do what should happen is we're actually transcribing for 20 seconds and then we Hit should it. see all of the speech appear on the screen. So let's go on ahead and run this. So it should read out recording and you can see that it's now transcribing wow. in real time and it's actually performing really, <laughs> looks really cool. quickly. So I can keep talking and it's going to keep transcribing. That's awesome. So th we could definitely go down this route. I'm sure there's like we could follow this guy's tutorial. He seems like he's already got it figured out. Cool. So that's actually viable. That's actually viable. Okay. So we'll note this as a possibility. We'll say Watson. Cool. All right. We'll come back to that. But that's actually not bad. What else is out there? Modern voice to text. So we we talked about using Dragon. I think theirs are expensive. But let's let's look at it. Dragon speech recognition. Nuance. Dragon official store. This could be nice if we could just buy some software, run it, do everything offline. Could be nice. Not having to deal with APIs and all that. Best for everyday work with voice, solution to healthcare, solutions for professionals and consumers. I want to see your consumer offerings. Hey, can you go away? Thank you. All right. To get more done at work, at home, or on the go with fast, accurate speech recognition, dictation, and transcription, Dragon by Nuance is the world's leading speech recognition solution with over two decades of continuous development to meet the needs of the most blah, blah, blah. Okay, but what can you do for me, Dragon? Dragon Legal, Dragon Professional, try it for free. Mm, I'm pretty sure I snoozed you, dude. A yearly subscription is 150 bucks a year. How good is it? Create documents of any length and edit format and share them directly with your mobile service. Dragon Anywhere is the most accurate professional grade dictation service available on the market, bringing the power of Dragon di dictation to your mobile device, providing faster, smarter dictation capabilities. Makes it easy to create detailed and accurate documents, fill out reports, blah, blah, blah. Mobile dictation, 99% accuracy with. They got a typo in there. Oh, is this a joke? formatting this has to be a joke they put a typo in their 90 percent accurate statement two typos that's gotta be a joke 
because the, the other ones are fine, right? An easy to use correction menu for quick corrections, the train words feature. See, the training words is pretty nice. Access to customized words and auto text all device. Simple document sharing, email Dropbox. Dictate immediately with 99% accuracy. Speak as long as you want. Robust voice formatting and editing lets you select words and sentences for editing correction. Get even better dictation accuracy with powerful customizations. Add words specific to your industry to Dragon's vocabulary or create simple voice commands to shortcut repetitive steps. Think of inserting an email signature. Need to fill out forms? No. Need to share work. So this is this is like a productivity app. Definitely not the use case we have. 150 bucks a year if it just worked. I mean, we can just do that and be done with it, right? I kind of want to try a trial. Here we go. One week trial. Let's just do it. Give me a one week trial. All right. Let me put in my credit card info. Yeah. So maybe just using a service out of the box is the way to go. And then we can, we can spend the rest of the time taking that text and passing it to some API to clean it up or uh, make it more creative, I should say. So if you're watching this, let me know in the comments if you've ever messed around with voice to text. Curious to see what you guys use out there. It's definitely a solved problem. There's just too many solutions. <laughs> the hard part is choosing the right one. Okay, this is not working. All right, give me a sec. Okay, there we go. Our website sucks, by the way. I mean, it's not the worst, but it's being a little tricky. What the heck? Wants me to pay twice. Mm, I thought I might get double charged for this. I was using Digital River. I haven't used that for. Alright, it's loading. Loading, 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 loading. They're gonna email me. Well, let's see about that. Took my email. Give me a sec. No. Don't see the email. Once or to be a digital. What is it called? River. Digital River. You want dragon? It's not coming through yet. I don't have patience to wait a whole minute. Come on. It's not spam. Check my search by order number. Okay. Well, if it doesn't come through in a bit, I will just... Oh, hold on. There it goes. Right when I was about to give up. See, they know. They know. All right. Log into your account with email address, password, to create and check out. Go to my products. What? So all I had to do was log in this whole time. What was I waiting for then? Logging in, logging in, logging in. Logging in, logging in, logging in. Here I go. Logging into the app. It is taking forever. Log it in, log it in. Log in, please. I think it said it had a mobile app, so maybe I should start downloading that. Dragon anywhere. Well, installed on my phone just fine. Let's see how that works. Accept. Sign in. Probably should do this from my phone the whole time. Let's see. Nuance. Oh, doesn't like my password. Hold on one second. Okay, I'm back. Yeah, this website just completely died. Oh, wrong phone. Yeah, so it doesn't like that password that I chose. Which is interesting. Is my internet just down? I wonder if it's their website. Because I got to here and then I try to go to my account. It just doesn't load. Is there an outage? Is there a Dragon Anywhere outage? I think we're going to... I don't know. I don't like your reliability. Might just have to try something else. Yeah, you know, like account just does nothing. Just loads forever. It's crazy. Okay. Well, we tried. Yeah, it's got two stars. Okay, sorry. We're going to go back to our search. Modern voice to text. Hey, voice to text. Modern English. Modern to text. Modern voice to text. Trent. Voice to text software. Seven day trial. I don't know. Do we fall for that again? Turn audio and video into a transcript you can easily edit. Searchable, editable, 31 languages. Shall we? Seven days access. No credit card. Transfer up to three files. Invite your team to collaborate for free. Unlimited access to use captions. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to use these services. I think I'm just going to do it myself for the fun of it. Why not, right? The other one I want to look at before we get to the one I was actually considered is Amazon Transcribe. So Amazon says they extract key business insights from customer calls, videos, files, clinical conversations, and more. Again, so it's more like a businessy. Automatic convert speech to text. Learn more. Get started. I want to learn more about is there an example? Tutorial. Okay. Store tutorial will introduce you to service by highlighting key features and use cases. Also review the benefits of deep learning to improve the accuracy of transcription. So the one reason I would go with this is it, I could then use the suite of tools that AWS offers. So if I then wanted to take the output of this and then run it to like one of their Gen AI, you know, services, I could I could do that, right? But there's also no reason I can't just like 
take the output of some random app and put that into a AWS service. So don't necessarily need to keep everything in AWS, but that's something to consider. We should probably look at pricing. I think it's, I just read 60 minutes per month for 12 months on the free tier. So that gives me an hour a month. So let's put that on our list. I guess that's better. You know, if I do one a month, that's better than nothing, but Let's see, what was it called? Amazon, Amazon transcribe, right? Let's see, Amazon transcribe gives free hour per month for a year. That's a total of 12 hours, not quite 100 hours. Standard pricing, Amazon transcribe API for both streaming and batch transcriptions with build monthly based on the tier pricing shown below. Automatic content redaction, add-on pricing, custom language model, add-on pricing. You can build your own custom language models by training Amazon Transcribe tra standard models to, with your domain-specific text. Once you have a CLM, you can choose which transcription job should utilize the CLM. So that's something I would love to build for fun. I just think it's a little out of scope of what I'm trying to do. All right, so here's the different tiers. Why does it gotta be East? We're in Central now. Where is Mount Central? Nope, 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 nope. Okay, we guess we're going to East Coast. First 250,000 minutes, holy crap, per minute. So that's the two cents rate that we saw before. It's actually two and a half cents. Yeah, so we definitely probably stay in this tier, but it's about the same, maybe a little more. Let's see, um, 2.4 cents multiplied by, what did we say it was gonna be? How were, how were we doing this pricing before? <laughs> 250,000 minutes, we don't need that many minutes. We did like a 100 hours, let's say 100 hours in minutes. Yeah, 6,000, that's right. And then we did 6,000 times four cents in dollars. That's 144, so it's like $24 more than the other one. So we'll put that on the list for uh, 100 hours. Okay, yeah, so similar, a little more expensive, but doable. All right, so they got, they've got they got tutorials. They've got probably a demo somewhere. I didn't really see one, but I bet we could probably find one if we, if we tried, if we looked hard enough. All right, so definitely it's possible, it's potential. But this makes me wonder if Google's platform has a similar offering. So we'll say Google Cloud Platform. Sorry, Google, I'm not talking to you. Text, no, voice to text, voice to text service. I guess we should try Microsoft too at the end. All right, here's their pricing table. Same price, funny enough. But that's standard. Medical and standard are two different offerings without data logging, with data logging opt in. The price on this table, wait, it's cheaper if they log my data? What the heck is data logging? That's probably where they take my stuff. Oh, there's a V1 and V2. How much better is V2 though per month? Speech recognition without data logging, speech recognition with, wait, why is V2 much cheaper? Am I reading that wrong? What the heck? An eighth, oh, eighth of a minute. Or per, no, 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 per minute, yeah. Over 60 minutes a month. So it's free under 60 minutes. So it's over 60 minutes a month. So this one is, I mean, how many minutes do we really need here? Is that a million to two million minutes? I'm pretty sure we're good with that one. So this one is one cent, but this one is an eighth of a cent. Oh, I see, it goes down by a tier. It gets cheaper as you use it. Why would that be the case? What am I missing here? It goes from 1.6 cents to one cent to an eighth of a cent to a fourth of a cent. And then what is it with data logging? Yeah, che even cheaper. All right, standard models include default command and search, latest short, latest long phone call, video chirp, speech to text, V2 only. Medical models include medical conversion. Each request is rounded up to the nearest increment of one second. Pricing factors, whether you have opted into data logging. The number of channels in the audio being recognized, the length and amount of audio you send, the recognition model you are using. Yeah, what's I guess that's model view one or two. Do they have custom ones like the AWS CLM thing? The batch method you are using, the API version you are using. By opting into data logging, you can allow Google to record audio data sent to speech to text. This data helps Google improve the machine learning models used for speech. I almost don't really care if they do that. Customers who opt into data logging benefit from the lower speech to text pricing. That's how they get you. Multiple channels. Each audio channel is built separately. If you sp send requests with multiple channels, you will be built according to some total length of audio process for all channels. This time accounting is different from how monthly usage limits are tracked. Usage limits don't take multiple channels into account and are determined only by the length of the audio file. 
For example, if you send a request with 30 seconds of audio and four channels, you will be billed 120 seconds, but only 30 seconds will count against your monthly quota. Dang. Dynamic batch. The speech to text v2 API can an option to use dynamic batch. Dynamic batch processes audio at a lower level of urgency. So that's what I would use. If you enable dynamic batch, you'll be billed at a discounted rate. Large workloads for customers with very large workloads, additional volume discounts may be available. Man, this actually feels like if you were gonna, yeah, for pricing concerns, this might be the way to go. But I, I, like I said, I don't really care. You know, it's gonna be 120 bucks for 100 hours. I don't see this project being more than 100 hours, but maybe. But yeah, this is already super convoluted. Like you gotta choose V1 or V2. You gotta choose, do they steal your data or not? We're not gonna have to do with med medical, that's fine. Audio channels, which I didn't even, th I didn't even think about that, but I guess if it's two people talking, maybe we, we could get it to two audio channels or one audio channel if we're talking over each other, I don't know. If you store audio files, we recognize in Google Cloud Storage or use other Google Cloud platforms such as in tandem with speech text, such as Google App Engine instance, then you will also be billed for those uses. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, seems feasible. Is there a, we'll just say, what do they call it by the Google, is it Google convert speech to text? They don't have a fancy name. They don't have a fancy name. Oh, they call it cloud speech to text. Google cloud, Google cloud speech to text can be half as much as AWS if you share your data, something like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. Oh, I just realized I lost the AWS. What was their fancy name? Transcribe, I don't need all that. All right, so call this Google. Oh, why are you in a very weird state right now? Google, nope, don't, nope, nope, don't, don't like that. Undo you, don't be done. That. All right, so, so Google. Let's look at two more. We'll see what Amazon or Microsoft offers. Microsoft. They actually use their translation service, like live translation service with their app. Totally recommend it. You guys should try it if you haven't before and you have a need for it. Microsoft text to speech. Azure. Speechify. We are the best option. AI technology. We'll look at it. Text to speech. Other way around, guys. Speech. Oh, I did it backwards. Come on. Who's who's catching my mistakes here? Huh? Nobody? Speech to text. Audio to text translation. There we go. Oh, you can try it. Start free. Create custom customized AI powered search with an Azure free account. They don't need AI search. What are you talking about? Oh, that just gives you free 12 months of AI or Azure AI services. I just want to try this. They're not going to let me try it without an account. Okay, we're going to start free. Let's go ahead and start free, guys. Starting free. Sign up for page to go. Transfer to Azure free accounts only available to new users. Oh my gosh. And one per user sign up for PageGo subscription using an existing subscription in your account, I guess. Okay, PageGo. I already have this two years ago. I wonder how much they've been charging me. All right, what do they call theirs? Speech to text. Do they have a cool name for it? Speech to text. Speech to text. This is it just speech service? This is probably the other way, isn't it? All right, we're going to go back to before we signed in. Azure speech to text. Why is it backwards again? speech to text this time try it free mm. wish they would just know i'm already signed in why are you making me sign in again i'm already signed in refresh whatever it's called it's called speech to text make spoken audio actionable quickly and accurately transcribe audio to text in more than 100 languages check out what's new with this high quality transcription get accurate audio to text transcription with state-of-the-art speech recognition accurately transcribe speech from various sources microphones audio files blob storage Deploy anywhere, run speech to text wherever your data resides, build speech applications that are optimized for robust, robust cloud capabilities and on-premise. Yeah, this would be great if I could try it. Feel, feel app innovation, comprehensive some privacy, see pricing, flexible pricing. Is it the whole AI service? Unified speech services for speech to text, text to speech, speech translation. So it does all of it. Explore pricing, free. So free gives you five audio hours per month. That's way lower. Wasn't Amazon like, I don't remember now, but it was a lot more for the free one, I'm pretty sure. Actually, don't we have it here? How many minutes? Uh, lots in China to 120. Free, oh no, it gives you a free hour per month. Oh, my bad. It's actually five times better. Sorry, sorry, Microsoft. All right, five hours a month. Yeah, that's probably, that actually might be enough now that I think about it. Probably Probably not if I have a really busy month though. But I'm curious how easy this is to set up. We might just start with this. So just conversational transcription, multi-channel, sick. 
It's a preview though. And you know, Microsoft's invested in open AI, so this might actually be the way to go. Text-to-speech, per character billing, speech translation, speak recognition, speak recognition. So you could get that 10,000, so a bunch of free stuff. This all seems good. Page to go, what you use, speech to text per second billing. So they do per hour, it looks like. What's the per minute cost? I guess divide by 60. Dollar per hour for the standard custom endpoint hosting, custom speech training, ten dollars per compute hour, enhanced add on features, diarization. I saw this, this diarization thing. I wanted to look more into it. Text or speech to text. What is diarization? Speaker diarization, probably saying that wrong is a feature of speech to text that identifies different speakers in audio recording. It detects when speakers change and labels each voice by number. Oh, cool. I do want that. I mean, it'd be nice, but I don't know. How much more is it? 30 cents per hour per feature. So I don't need that, but this this is an extra 30 cents per hour. So let's say it's 130 an hour for 100 hours, dollars times 100. Oh man, that's easy math. 130 hours, $30 obviously. Okay, so 100 to 130, which is in the same ballpark as the other one. So we'll say, uh, what, did, what do they call this? Cognitive speech? Microsoft Cognitive Speech Services. Services. That is five hours free per month. And add on for detecting, detecting speakers. 100 hours would be 100 to 1. 30 depending on the add-on okay very cool i wonder how fast we can get up and running with this oh and then they have a another tier down here oh no it's the non-free one commitment tiers so this is if you commit to this many hours Woohoo! 1600 dollars yeah well if you had an app that was out there i guess in public people were paying you can make sense. Disconnected containers. So if you just want to do it in the privacy of your home, not really your home, still in the cloud. Okay, that's a lot. Two hundred eighty-five thousand a year. We're we're small time. We're not doing anything like that. Okay. So one other thing before we. I mean, I do want to kind of try this, but we're probably running out of time. I want to keep this to like an hour. We're at 51 minutes. Before we do either of any of these, I wanted to look at one other like roll your own type thing. So that was, I have it up here somewhere. Here we go. This guy. So OpenAI has a service called Whisper. It said, we've trained and are open sourcing a, and are over, open sourcing a net Neural net called Whisper that approaches human level robustness and accuracy in English speech recognition. So they wrote a paper about this. This is September last, and you can you can watch. Here's an example of it. This is the micro machine man presenting the most midget miniature motorcade of micro machines. This one has dramatic Dan Aykroyd. Precision, precision paint jobs, plus incredible micro machine pocket plates that fit the police station, fire station, restaurant, service station, and more. Perfect pocket portables to take any place. And there are many miniature play sets to play with, and each one comes with its own special edition micro machine vehicle and fun, fantastic features that miraculously move. Raise the boltless at the airport marina, man the gun turret at the army base, clean your car at the car wash, raise the toll bridge. And these play sets fit together to form a micro machine world. Micro machine pocket play sets, so tremendously tiny, so perfectly precise, so dazzlingly detailed, you'll want to pocket them all. Micro machines and micro machine pocket play sets sold separately from the Louvre. The smaller they are, the better they are. I don't think it's Dan that sounds like I think I've seen a little grammar. pop so this is probably translated or what yeah so translation this translation so the French one whisper it assists automatic 680,000 hours of multilingual and multitasking data collected here's with an accent one of the most famous landmarks on the board of three hills and the myth is that Merlin the magician split one hill went how the heck did it get that and the myth is the, the Merlin wow it's three and the left, the two hills at the back of us, which you can see. The weather's never good, they always stay in the borders with the mists on the yoke. We never get the good weather. And as you can see today, there's no sunshine. It's a typical Scottish borders day. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> So it talks about the uh, one mistake. Hiddens as yieldens. I don't even know what that is. Did these have mistakes? These didn't even have mistakes. So like this is next generation, okay? And if we're, you know, doing more AI stuff, why not go with open AI? Let's look at it. So let's learn a little bit more about it and then I'll end showing you how we could actually use this right now if we wanted to. Whisper is an automatic speech recognition system trained on 680,000 hours of multilingual multitask supervised data collected from the web. 
we showed that the use of such a large and diverse data set leads to improved robustness to accents, background noise, and technical langu language. Moreover, it enables transcriptions in multiple languages as well as translation from those languages to English. We are open sourcing models and inter inference code to serve as foundation for building useful applications and for further research on robust speech processing. So I'm not I'm not fully caught up on transformers and gen AI tech, but let's see if we can decide, decipher this a bit. So is it coming in this way? <laughs> Log Mel spectrogram. Yeah, this, this it already lost me. But this is like audio waves, spectrogram. 2x conv 1D plus gel U. No idea. Sinusoidal positional encoding. Sign of something to do with waves. Encoder block, encoder block, all the way up to here where it cross, it does cross attention decoder blocks. And here it says tokens in multitask training format. Sot and transcribe 0.0, .0 the quick, whew. It's like predicting the next word, I guess. Yeah, that's crazy. All right, the Whisper architecture is a simple end to end approach implemented as an encoder decoder transformer. Input audio is split into 30 second chunks converted into a log mail spectrogram and then passed into an encoder. A decoder is trained to predict the corresponding text caption intermixed with special tokens that direct the single model to perform tasks such as language identification, phrase level timestamps, multilingual sp speech transcription, and two English speech translation. So they can introduce translation in the middle. It's so like language tag, no speech, voice activity detection, language identification, cool. Previous text tokens, start of Transcript, special text token, timestamp tokens, XX transcription, transcribe, translate, begin time, text token, end time, begin time, text token, end time, end of transcription, maybe? No timestamps, text tokens, EOT, text only transcription, text align transcription. Others using process frequently use smaller, more closely paired audio text training data sets or use broad but unsupervised. I wonder what unsupervised means in this case. Super. Revised audio training. Does it mean a human looked at it? Let's see. What is this? Tell me what this is. Self-supervised learning is a method of learning latent representation from large amounts of unlabeled data. This is proxy supervised learning tests and obtain training. I don't care about self surface or let's look at the scholarly articles. Mass spectrogram prediction for self-supervised audio pre-training. Is it only related to audio? Oh, because I said audio. No, I didn't search that. What did I search? Showing results for supervised audio training supervises audio training. What the heck did I type? Supervised audio training. Yes, I guess it is audio. Supervised, um, supervised learning of audio. In this work, we provide a broad comparative analysis of strategies for pre-training audio understanding models for several tasks in the music domain, including labeling of genre, error, or origin, mood, instrumentation, key, pitch, vocal, characters, tempos of a sauna. Okay, specifically, we explore how the domain of pre-training data sets, music, or generic audio, and the pre-training methodology, supervised or unsupervised, affects the adequacy of the resulting. What is it though? Supervised versus supervised. Supervised training. The main difference between supervised and unsupervised learning is the need for labeled training data. Supervised learning uses labeled data, while unsupervised learning uses unlabeled data. Supervised learning requires human oversight to manage the training data. Well, unsupervised learning. Regards. So I was right. It requires some human intervention, but it labels it. Okay, so a human is labeling it as like, oh, this is music, and so they put it in, so they know it's music. This one could be like, in this case, they put it in, they say it's English or it's in a Scottish accent or whatever. Okay, I get it. Because Whisper was trained on a large and diverse data set and was not defined to to any specific one, it does not beat models that specialize in Libri speech performance, a famously competitive benchmark in speech recognition. However, when we measure Whisper's zero-shot performance across many diverse data sets, we find it is much more robust and makes 50% fewer errors than those models. Okay, so that's one thing to think about. It's like maybe Dragon is better with English or just like clean audio. Hmm, something to consider then. About a third of Whisper's audio data set is non-English and is alternatively given the task of transcribing in the original language or trans translating into English. We find this approach is particularly effective at learning speech to text translation and outperforms the supervised soda on 
Kovas 2 to English translation, zero shot. Jeez. English transcription, that's not what you need to English speech translation, non-English translation, no speech. We hope Whisper's high accuracy and ease of use will allow developers to add voice interfaces to a much wider set of applications. Check out the paper model card and code to learn more details to try out Whisper. What is this? Model card Whisper. This is the official code base for running the automatic speech recognition ASR models, Whisper models, trained and released by OpenAI. Following model cards for model reporting, Mitchell et al. We're providing some information about the automatic speech recognition model. More information on how these models were trained and evaluated can be found in the paper. Model details, the whisper models are trained for speech recognition and translation tasks. Capable of translating speech audio into the text, into the language it is spoken, ASR, as well as translated into English speech translation. Researchers at OpenAI developed the models to study the robustness of speech processing systems trained under large-scale, weak supervision. There are nine models of different sizes and capabilities summarized in the following table. Tiny, base, small, medium, large. In December 2022, we released an improved large model named Large V2. Ooh, release dates so to Large V2, model type, sequence to sequence, ASR, automatic speech recognition, and speech translation model. Paper and samples, worth the samples. Model use, valid use, the primary intended users of these models are AI researchers studying a robust set of capabilities. Okay. Training data, performance and limitations. Our studies showed that over many existing ASR systems, the models exhibit improved robustness of accents, background noise, and technical language, as well as zero shot translation for multiple languages into English. And that accuracy on speech recognition translation near the state of the art level. However, yes, I'm already right about that. We are pleased to announce the large V2 model. This model has been trained on 2.5 times more epochs with spec augment, stochastic depth, and VP dropout for regularization. Other than the training procedure, the model architecture and size remain the same as the original large model, which is now re renamed large V1. The new large model shows improved performance in transcription, translation, as well as language identification compared to the large V1 model. The new model is a lot more on trend with the smaller models in the scaling curves. Whew, data man, am I right? All right, if you already have installed, okay, I made more tests. Okay, so let's go back to the First, I want to see if the blog has any examples. Doesn't look like it does. I mean, I guess it does. We saw one example at the top. Okay, cool. The next thing I want to look at is the code. So that's one of the models. The actual code for this is mentioned here. All right, well, Whisper, so it talks about what it is. So here's their approach. Looks like the same diagram we looked at before, maybe a little different. Yeah, MLP, cross attention, self attention, slightly different. Yeah, this is the same one with color. A transformer sequence to sequence model is trained on various speech processing tasks, including multilingual. Yeah, we already talked about that. All right, setup. So we use Python and PyTorch to train and test our models, but the code base is expected to be compatible with Python 3.8, recent PyTorch versions. The code base also depends on a few Python packages, most notably OpenAI's Tick Token and their fast tokenizer implementation. You can download, install, or update to the latest release of Whisper with the following command. Does that really work? We're gonna try it right now. Oops, I don't have pip. Do I have brew? You have not agreed to the Xcode license. I just updated my Xcode, that's why. Let's do that real quick. All right, so we are over time and I'm just now getting into the code. All right, let's go a bit longer. Shoot, I need my password. That's why I'm my password. Where's my password? Why is my keyboard broke? Okay, I agreed. Download and install. All right, let me try this again. Brew. Do you even brew, bro? All right, looks like I have brew. Brew install pip, is that, or install Python. I guess Python package manager, that's what, you know what pip is? Let's just say Mac OS install. This is a fairly new Mac, that's why I haven't set this up. But yeah, install. No, I know how to install that. How do you install pip? How to install pip on Mac, step by step. Thank you. Give me the one step. What application utilities open terminal Python? Do I have Python? I guess it comes with Python, but let's see which version of Python we have. Oops, brew install PP Python. That's not a thing. Brew update. Just doing a brew update. I don't have Python. If it's not installed, you will come in. I will see them. When you install software on your Mac, use pip or homebrew. It can be difficult to keep track of exactly what you're installing, where it comes from, and what permissions you've given in terms of accent folders on your Mac and camera. Uh, that makes it very important to check which apps the permissions are on your Mac. The easiest way to do this is use privacy module and clean my Mac X. No, thank you. I see what you're doing here. You're trying to sell me that. I see what you did there. This is the best method for installing pip. Okay, so we're gonna brew install Python first then. Let's see, Python 3.9.9. Install Python 3.9.9 with brew. Just don't know how to do the uh, 3.9. 
So we go brew install. I guess I did know that. Python at 3.9 pip dot found. We're going to relaunch the terminal and see see about that. No, nope, doesn't have it. So do this. Ensure pip or Python 3. Ensure pip. Let's go Python 3. That's the only Python I have. Probably don't need that. No module named ensure API. Mm. Python dash in ensure pip. I just typed it wrong, right? Python 3 dash n ensure pip. Here we go. Requirement already satisfied. Pip in do do do. How do I already have it? Oh, I could have used Humber. All right, well, let's see if pip is installed now. You know what? I bet it's pip3. Yeah, docs never say that. <laughs> yeah, Python 3 and pip3. I think you could probably remap that if you wanted. Whatever. Cool. So let's see if that installs everything, including this PyTorch and OpenAI's tick token. Alternatively, the following command will pull and install the latest commit. I don't need that, I guess. It also requires the command line tool ffmpeg. Ooh, we've used that before. Translating. It's like a codec for translating video files, or I guess any audio file too. You should consider upgrading. Via the, the, the. Fine. I will update. Literally just upgraded. Why are you telling me to do it again? Already satisfied. Okay. Right. It also requires the command line tool fmmpeg to install, which is available from package managers. Brew install fmmpeg. fmmpeg. You may need Rust installed as well in case TikToken does not provide a pre built wheel for your platform. What the heck is a wheel? I've never used Rust. If you see installation errors during the pip install command above, oh, I may have. Please follow the getting started page to install Rust development environment. Additional, you may need to configure the path environment variable. I will come back to that. Available models and languages. So we can start with like a tiny or something. The EN models for English only applications tend to become perform better, especially for the tiny EN. Whispered performance varies widely depending on the language. The figure below shows a word error rate breakdown by language of the Fluor's data set using the large V2 model. The smaller the numbers, the better their performance. So Spanish is better than English. That's crazy. I guess it's an easier language. Meanwhile, more bilingual evaluation and understudy scores can be found in Appendix D.3. Both are found in the paper. All right. Thanks for letting me know. Yeah, I don't know. I must have broke it when I muted earlier. I'm going to try to fix it in a sec. It's not possible. All right, we're back. I had to restart. Okay, so where, where do we leave off? All right, so to get Python, let's see, brew, brew install Python 3. It, it just installed Python 3.11. That's fine. And to get pip, I think it just brew installed pip 3. Or no, that didn't even, it comes with, pip comes with Python. So just brew installed Python 3. And then to get whisper, you to call pip, basically, you would call Python 3.11, in this case, dash m pip install dash u and whisper. And it just worked. I mean, I also installed the tick token first, so maybe that helped pip install tick token. Same way by doing you know, tick token. Yeah. So Python 3-m pip install tick token. All right. And I verified before I restarted that whisper now works, or at least it knows what whisper is. Cool. So to test this, I have an audio file on my desktop. We're going to my desktop. LS. All right, and we're going to say whisper. I don't know why this passes in three different audio files. I guess it can work on three at a time. We don't need three. We need a voice to text one dot wave. So from here, my live, by the way, I'm going to make sure my audio is working this time. One second. Audio files. I guess it can work on three at a time. We don't need three. We need. Yes. Okay. Audio is working. Cool, we're back. All right, so I actually had two viewers there for a second. Well, I hope you guys come on back. Thanks for watching. All right, and whisper the name of the file and then what? The model. So we can start with small. I want to see how small works. Okay, so it's uploading the file. 461 megs, is that right? Look at my file on my desktop. File is 7.4 megabytes. Not sure, maybe it was, let's see, use F. P16 is not supported on CPU. There's a warning or actual failure. Oh, here it goes. It worked, guys. Check it out. It says, this is a test. My name is Randy Lutkovich, which has got close. This link's nice, but And I'm here to tell you that you can translate voice to text. Let me play the audio for you at the same time. And you guys can, you can see how well it did. 
This is a test. My name is Randy Ludkovich, and I'm here to tell you that you can translate voice to text. Now I'm going to mumble and see what happens. This is a mumble on about stuff. Now I'm going to talk really fast. This is me talking really fast about the quick brown fox. <laughs> Not really that fast. And then I'm going to talk really slow. This is me talking. So bad. Really? Okay, so that's really basic, and it got it all right, which is cool. It did it in chunks. Are these timestamps? Is this saying from 8 seconds to 14 seconds, this line was read? Because that's pretty cool if that's what that's saying. Let me let me check. I opened iTunes. No, thank you. Open with quick time. Here. So 8 seconds. Oh, that's the volume. 8 seconds. There's 7 to text. Now I'm going to mumble and see what happens. This is mumble. Now I'm going to mumble and I should go stuff. up to 14 seconds. Now I'm going to talk really fast. That's 16. This is me talking really fast about the quick brown fox. To 21 seconds. Yep. Oh, it did it. Did it. So it gives me the timestamps and everything. That is great. Okay, so that just worked and I used a small model. Now, granted, this is a decent microphone. It wasn't crazy conversational or anything, but it's a good start. Probably we're going to leave it right now, but this is awesome. Let's see, some to-do items for next time, maybe. By the way, we ended up using Whisper. I didn't even have to use any tokens or anything. It just did it all offline, which is freaking awesome. The one thing I will say is, before ending this, is that you could write some Python to do this. So if you want to write some kind of a pipeline that takes the audio files, that outputs the text, and then maybe runs them through some other gen ai stuff to make the text more creative or parse it in some way you could do that and we'll probably do that in a future episode but i want to show you this show and tell so the show and tell section is everyone who's using this which is a ton i haven't been through all of them but the one that i noticed was web ui also there's this setup for how to set it up while offline i was going to do that if the setup instructions we just followed were like failed but they seem to work so maybe they updated those this was from june so maybe the the basic readme is fine now. But the web UI I wanted to show you guys. So let me enable something here because my token's on screen. Granted, I could just see. I could just uh, change it later. But okay, so this guy made a web app. Really simple web app. Here's the here's the GitHub. And how did he write it? I never actually checked what code he wrote. Oh, just HTML and JavaScript. But yeah, here's what it looks like. I'm covering up my token, but I basically got my token from OpenAI. So you can say, when you don't put your token in here, we'll give you a link to go get your token from OpenAI. Just note that it's not your ChatGPT. So if you have to like pay for the ChatGPT service on OpenAI, like I do here, let me show you. It doesn't count towards that. Instead, it uses, so there's API, ChatGPT, and Dolly. And so the API uses different billing. So ChatGPT has its own billing. So I have X amount of chats I can do or whatever on 4.5. And then the API itself, you can get your token um, API versions. So I had a secret key. I don't remember what it was. So I just created another one by saying create a new secret key, giving it a name Whisper. Then I got the key. You can't copy it once you have it, so you got to store it in your password manager or whatever. But yeah, so I got the token, and then I was able to use this web app. And the web app works the same. Basically, you can choose it to detect the language, or you just say use English. I don't know what normal SRT or VTT does. But yeah, if I say choose audio, desktop, oh, it looks like, it looks like it actually output a file on the desktop. Oh, that was the, the, that was the command. The terminal command we ran earlier actually outputted text. I didn't notice that. Anyways, this one prints it right here. It doesn't have the timestamps and it uses the API. So you actually have to pay for it. So I just like put a hundred bucks on, on my, on the API worth of credits. And I've ran this a few times and I've used, I guess it doesn't really say how much I've used yet, less than one cent. So I don't know how many hundreds of hours or hours you could get out of that, but I might use that. It's kind of convenient. Just use the web app. But I didn't realize there's nothing special you have to do to run the whisper terminal command to get it to be offline. It's just offline. Like So I didn't put in a token, a secret key or anything. It just worked. So I definitely think I would uh, recommend installing this. There's a few Python commands and then boom, we're up and running. And I didn't show you, but here's what it output. So I started with my WAV file and then I output JSON, SRT, TSV, T text, and VTT. So text, obviously is text, doesn't have the uh, timestamps. VTT has the timestamps. TSV I've never heard of. Looks like that opens in numbers. I wonder if it's like a spreadsheet. TSV. TSV, something separated value instead of 
Oh, tab separated value, I bet you. Do my spreadsheet. Yeah. Okay. So this has the start and time in the text as well. And then SRT, I don't know what that is. And then JSON. What does JSON open up by default? So, okay. Xcode. Yeah, there's the JSON. So you could have some kind of web app that parses that, whatever. Great. That's really cool. Okay. So the next thing we could do, so I'm going to end here, I promise, but I'm going to take this as an example of kind of what I'll end up doing in the long run, right? I'm going to take that text or I guess, can I take the VTT one? Let's see the VTT. All right. Here is a transcription of an audio file. Okay. Is there something you'd like me to do with it? Yes. I would like you to, let's see. So I'm going to end up trying to get this voice to text and the text to be cleaned up in order to a couple different things. We wanted to know if it could clean up mistakes. Well, I didn't I don't see any mistakes in here to be honest. Oh, you know what? There is one, but it actually kind of already just like cleaned it up. So this says now I'm going to mumble and see what happens. But if you listen to the recording. This is a test. My name is Randy Ludkovich, and I'm here to tell you that you can translate voice to text. Now I'm going to mumble and see what happens. This is mumble. I'm mumbling about stuff. Now I'm going to talk really fast. This is me talking really fast about the quick brown fox. I take it back. This one actually got it correct. I think it was me as this one. This part that was missing when I ran it in the web app previously. Let's see if it messed up here as well. Now I'm going to mumble and see what happens. Okay, can translate. This is a mumble about stuff. Now, yeah, so this is wrong, right? Am I crazy or is that wrong? Let's see. So this one was correct. Now I'm going to mumble and see what happens. Now I'm going to mumble and see what happens. This is a mumble. I'm mumbling about stuff. So like this one is wrong. This one is correct. So I think this is using a different model, maybe. Not sure. But when I did it, it actually worked, came out correct. Hmm. Well, anyways, either way, I was I could spot the mistake by reading it, but I would want I would want maybe to use Gen AI to discover the mistake. But in this case, it just omitted something, right? This is a mumble part is gone. Or no, that's still there. It's the second I'm mumbling that's gone. It just kind of merge these two. Hmm. So there's nothing I can really do if it omits something like that or combines two like that, other than maybe call it out myself. Okay. So the other thing I want to try to do is pick out pieces that I like. So highlight the meaningful ones and get rid of everything else. So one way I might do that is somehow tag Let's see if I say, um, give me back the transcript, but what did my friend call this? He had a name for it. It's called Postal X. I wonder if that's actually an industry term, but I'll just say, but select, notate, notate the parts that, hmm, I don't know. I don't, I, I kind of want to do multiple things, but let's say like, if I say multiple, like, notate the parts that are the most interesting, that's not really going to work. What if? I do that? What if I first notate them? So if I then say the part that I really like is the mumbling, let's say, let's say I don't like this. Well, hmm. I could do something like this. Let's say, let's say I want to edit things out. So I want like a really quick way to edit stuff out. So what if I just put asterisks around it and I go, I don't want that. And then let's say I want to reword something that is extra complicated. So let's say, well, let's like use symbols. Hear me out. Okay. I'm going to make this bigger. Okay. So here's what I'm thinking. We give it this and we go, here's the transcription with new notations. I want you to remove everything surrounded by also want you to rephrase everything surrounded by rephrase to pirate. All right, hear me out. I want to see if it's could figure that out, right? Oops, I didn't mean to include that. Here's the edit transcription. So he got it got rid of the one sentence I didn't want, right? And where's the pirate one? Then I'd be going to talk at a turtle's pace. Perfect. So imagine, you know, hundreds of hours of audio and a pipeline that converts it to text and then some either either by hand or some automated way you flag certain sections and you go, I want you to take everything from oh here's another way we could do it. Give me everything from eight seconds to thirty seconds. 
six, no, to, what if it was in the middle of these? Wouldn't that be interesting? To around 40 seconds. No, to around, we'll say, I want to get like around 23 seconds. Let's see if I can figure that out. So this one's in the middle of this one. What's it going to give me? What the heck is Mathematica? Is there anything else you need? Copy code. It did it, but it did it in such a weird way. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, it gave me this one because that's around that time. And then what if I said, uh, what word was used the most? So this is just looking at that block now so it's narrowed the scope it says now is used twice it is used twice what's up joshua what's going on buddy i see you to drop in i was just about to end the stream but now i gotta hang out a little more how you doing turtles was mentioned once i know that's that's a fact fast was fast mentioned twice oh nope. i did say fast twice so maybe this is accurate let's see b was said four times one two is about right this is kind of interesting you can like so you take your audio think about recording myself all the time now and then i could just like ask questions about my speech patterns <laughs> let's say uh, how about this look at the full text and give me insights about the way i speak let's see if that works including the original and Pirate rephrase portions. The variation in pace and clarity. Randy experiments with various speaking paces. You don't think it's taking into account the timestamps to know about my pace, do you? That's freaking awesome if it is. Randy experiments with various speaking paces and clarity. Levels ranging from mumbling to speaking quickly and then transitioning to a slower pace. <laughs> okay, to be fair, the inputted text was me saying I'm mumbling and speaking slowly. I just want some audio of me speaking normally and see how it would handle it. Self-referential. <laughs> Randy often references his own actions in the speech. That's true. Out casual tone, direct and informative. Simplicity and vocabulary. Hey, that's rude. Just kidding. Repetition for emphasis. I do do that. It's funny because I just like off the cuff said this stuff, but I'm really taking all this personally because all of this really does seem correct. Remember, this analysis is based solely on the short transcription and provided may not fill in. Okay. Replace, fix the spelling of my name in the original text. And original text. You should be able to figure that out. Nice. Okay. Of course you can do that. I don't know. You guys, you got any chat or any ideas, chat? Joshua, you hear anything you want me to try before I sign off? Yeah. You probably missed the, the first part, but basically I'm going to be doing some interviews and I'm going to be recording me asking someone questions, that kind of interview. And then I'm going to translate that voice conversation, could be an hour, eventually hundreds of hours, maybe, who knows. I'm gonna translate it into text. I decided to use OpenAI's Whisper, which did an amazing job when I ran it locally using their small version of the model. Gave me the timestamps and everything and perfect translation. To be fair, it was clean audio and it was a very simple recording, but we're gonna try it with a more complex interview style recording in the future. Once I have that text, I'm gonna ask, you know, ChatGPT or something like that to organize that text for me, maybe pull out certain patterns, certain stories, rephrase them, basically end up writing sort of short stories out of them. In fact, let's try that right now. Tell a short story using the detail, using the, I'm gonna say words, because I don't want to use the timestamps. Short story using the, tell a short creative story using the words in the transcription. In the heart of the seaside town of Textport, young Randy Lukovic ran a unique shop named Voices Echo. That's cool. The shop had a sign hanging outside displaying translate voice to text. One morning, a flustered fox named Felix entered the store. I heard this is a place where one can translate voice to text, he said, panting heavily. That's right, Randy replied. Notice how I give myself the cool voice. Glancing up from his parchment, how can I assist you today? Felix responded, well, this might sound odd, but I need to mumble a secret message into text. It's about... Death. Curious, Randy leaned in and said, Go ahead, mumble away. The fox mumbled, and as he did, Randy's quill danced across the paper, capturing every word. However, just as Felix was about to reveal the real essence of the message, he began to talk really fast. The quick brown fox, that's me, needs to find the golden feather before sundown. Randy blinked in surprise. Why the hurry? Felix sighed. If I don't, 
The spell that keeps me quick will wear off, and I'll talk really slow forever. Understanding the urgency, Randy handed over the translated text. Take this to the wise owl on Whispering Hill. She'll know what to do. With a nod of gratitude, Felix dashed off, holding tight to the hope. With Randy's help, he might just break the curse in time. There you go, guys. We got a short story. Publish it. Send it off to the printer. Okay. Thanks for watching. We'd love your feedback. If you want to see more stuff like this, like I said, this project's just getting started. There'll be more to come. We'll actually write some code at some point, but just wanted to kick something off. So thanks for following me along, for following me around while I did that research, and we even got this cool little test going. Till next time, Android out.